All right, so let's talk about the 2020 Razer Blades. These are some of the most expensive gaming laptops on the market. They are like the top tier premium stuff. Uh, they are very expensive, like way more than a lot of competitors that have like similar performance. So because they're so expensive, I want to do a just a different kind of review, not just a, you know, an overview of the products, but I want to talk about the differences between the different models this year, but I also want to talk about the why, like why are they so expensive if there's a reason or a good reason at all. Now, in front of me are the 2020 base model, the advanced model, as well as last year's advanced model. If you follow my channel, this is the device that I use the most of over the past few years. Like I used the 2018, then I switched over to 2019 model. This was an imperfect machine, but I liked it enough. Uh, they tweaked some stuff, but yeah, let's get in. All right. The base model starts at 1600 bucks, but then it jumps up quite quickly to like 2600 bucks when you go up to the advanced model. And there's hardware configurations and components that only exist in one or the other. So let's talk about the things that are in common between the two. They both have that unibody construction to them. And I think it's a feature that makes these devices more expensive than a lot of the competitors right off the rip. Like to manufacture this just costs more. You have to mill out that whole block of aluminum to fit the internals in there. And it just makes the device look nicer. It's got this nice design aesthetic to it, but it inherently costs more. The base model and the advanced model have the exact same shape. Like they have the same footprint, but the advanced model is a little bit thinner. It's like two millimeters thinner than the base model. It's noticeable, like if you pick it up and you're feeling for it, you'll notice it right away. It is pretty obvious, uh, but it's not something that I think makes a big difference, at least not to me. The other thing you have to keep in mind is that the advanced model is actually a little bit heavier. The cooling system in this one is a little bit more robust. We'll get into it later, but because of the more complex thermal solution, the advanced model is about 100 grams heavier. Now this year, they still have the black and white or silver models, but you can no longer get this color as readily. Like you have to get an OLED panel to get the mercury white, which is a bit of a miss. Like I feel like one of the reasons why I was drawn to this device in the first place was because of its color. It's still on, you know, it's a, it's a well-made machine, but you now have this very obvious, almost obnoxious snake logo up front, which I don't love. Now you can skin it, which I would anyways, just to protect it and kind of get the fingerprints off of it. But come on, Razer. I want to see the white again in a high refresh screen. Another thing that's shared between the two devices this year, both the base and advanced model, is their newly updated keyboard. It's the same keyboard as last year, but the layout of the right shift key is finally proper. This is something I've complained about for years. It is now in this appropriate location. I will say though, for people that have never used a razor blade keyboard, the spacing is very grid-like and the keys themselves are completely flat. There's no dish, so it does take some time to get used to the whole kind of typing mechanics on this thing. I do think that most people though, if they pick this up as their regular laptop, they'll learn to like it pretty quickly. Now the lighting on this keyboard is phenomenal. I'll be honest, I don't care that much about lighting because you know, once you've seen a brightly lit rainbow keyboard once, you've seen them all, but I think Razer does it, if not the best, like top three of all laptop manufacturers when it comes to RGB lighting on the keyboards. The advanced model is individually lit, like you can change the colors of each key individually to your heart's content. The base model has just one color. You can switch up all the colors, but every key has to be the same color. And it's also not as bright or as vibrant as the advanced model. Uh, now to the left and right are the speakers. They sound okay. I just feel like if Razer is charging this kind of money, I would have liked to have seen better speakers. Like the advanced and base models have the same sounding speakers, at least to me. I don't know, maybe it's like, maybe I go into laptop speakers too much, but I feel like the company that lands on good speakers on a gaming laptop is gonna win some amazing award. No one's doing it. All right, let's talk about the screens. These are different. Uh, they've been upgraded this year, so now we're moving on to stuff that is no longer in common between these two. The advanced model has a 300 hertz fast refresh IPS panel. It is very nice, super fast for games, good brightness, and great color accuracy. And I think this is one of the biggest advantages that Razer has in terms of their displays. They are able to maintain great color accuracy despite having high refresh screens. And something that a lot of other gaming laptops kind of waver on, like they'll have fast screens, but they just don't care as much about their color accuracy. So I'm able to comfortably edit videos and work on like photos and thumbnails and stuff with the screen because I can trust its color accuracy. And the thing is, even their base model also has great color accuracy on their high refresh screen, but it's capped at 144 hertz instead of the 300 hertz panel 
on the advanced model. So that's really the biggest difference between the screen and like kind of the gaming experience. They both have 720p webcams, but the advanced model has an infrared component to it, so we can log in with face biometrics in Windows Hello, whereas the base model cannot do that. All right, let's talk about performance. These machines have obviously very different performance because they are very different in pricing. This machine, the base model, does not have access to the best of the best. If you want like an eight core CPU, you have to go with the advanced models. If you want RTX Super GPUs, you have to go with the advanced models. And I think the reason why they did that is because the cooling system in this one, the advanced model, is better. It has a vapor chamber, so it can remove heat more efficiently. And that's why Razer puts the eight core CPU in this model and only a six core CPU in the unit without the vapor chamber. All right, now performance between the two is good, but not like amazing. There are devices out there that perform better both in terms of CPU and GPU performance than both of these. But what Razer does that is quite unique to their whole lineup is they balance that whole like noise level to performance to thinness of device well. I think they do it better than most devices out there. They are able to make a relatively high performance machine in, you know, a 18 or 19 millimeter package, but their fan noise isn't crazy. Like it's loud, but it's not super loud. There are devices that'll hit 60 decibels in the same kind of form factor. The disadvantage to having a quieter system like this is that you don't get the max performance on the chip. It's good, but it's not the best performer. Now I do like the fact that Razer doesn't run their system super hot. They take a notch down in performance, but it's a little bit quieter. It's a little bit cooler running than a lot of their competitors. Uh, if you're into undervolting, you can't do it. Neither of them can be undervolted, at least not from what I could see in either Throttle Stop or XTU. Last year's device was undervolted right out of the factory, so that was awesome. You can't seem to do that on this year's 10th gen ships. Uh, ports, they're similar on both models. They have three USB-A, one USB-C, and then another Thunderbolt 3 USB-C. The base model has an ethernet jack. The advanced model does not, but it does have an SD card slot. Now, in terms of charging, so they both have a 230 watt AC adapter. They have a custom AC adapter. Like 90% of the laptops I review just use these generic AC adapters like from Chaconi or Delta. These have their own like Razer branded AC adapter that uses a proprietary plug, but it's a braided cable and it's very fancy. And I think that is one of the things that bumps up the cost of these products. Now, the advanced model also supports this year USB-C charging, and it's a little bit complex. You need a USB-C charger that can pump out 20 volts, which isn't super common, like a lot of the laptop adapters can do it, but the most I could feed into this system was around 60 watts, which isn't a lot. Like this system normally uses a 230 watt adapter, so 60 is, it's not enough to power the system fully, so you cannot use a USB-C adapter to power this system and use it in its normal state. It'll run on USB-C, it just won't be full strength. Okay, let's take a look at the internals. The advanced model has a vapor chamber that takes up a big portion of the inside, and you also have access to your RAM and Wi-Fi that are both replaceable. Same thing with the base model, RAM, Wi-Fi, replaceable. The base model, however, has two NVMe drives, whereas the advanced model only has one which is a little strange. Like if you think about the people that are buying the eight core CPU and the more powerful GPUs, they could probably use more storage, but I think they just ran out of space. So one SSD in here, two in the base model. Now in terms of battery size, this is an 80 watt hour battery. So this will get you five and a half hours. I've ran my test a couple times, same battery life three years in a row, five and a half hours, year on year on year. This is a four hour battery, slightly more than four, but the 56 watt hour battery, it's a little short, but that's what you get. Okay, um, that basically wraps up the review component. I think it should be pretty clear at this point. Razer's devices are, they're just made differently. They're not for everyone, a little bit more expensive, and a lot of times you're paying for stuff that you don't really need, like a fancy AC adapter, but you are getting a device that is not just a plastic device that just has a Razer logo on it, right? I see a lot of people talking Discord, like, why do you use a Razer blade? Th there's stuff I like about it. That being said, I might be switching this year. There are some devices on the horizon that I might be switching to, but this is a solid device. It's just a little bit expensive. And as for whether or not this is like a good purchase for you, I can't answer that. You know your you know your budgets and your your needs and what you want to do with your machine way more than I do. I do think though that for the money, it's it's fair, especially if you get these things on sale. Now, I do think 
that the 2019 models are a way better value. And this is often the case with laptops in general, but because of how little has changed coming into this year's 2020 models, the 2019 models save you a good chunk of money with close performance, and it still comes in mercury white, if you're into that. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. I'll see you guys next time.